Welcome guys to Eternal Flame News. It is 9 p.m. Um, I realize that this is normally done at 7 p.m. But it's been quite a busy day. Miranda coming home yesterday and then with uh, our interview we had today with uh, Brandy Wilcox. We did also just post the social walk a mile in her shoes video. Uh, so I wanted you guys to realize this is part of uh, a more encompassing event. We originally had plans for an interview this evening at 7 so that's why we went ahead and changed the time. The interview has been cancelled and will be possibly brought to light in the future. Uh, one of the things I wanted to start out with and I'm not really going to share the article. I'm just going to talk about uh, that we're having our prayers for the Coast Guardsmen that uh, were killed in Kodiak, Alaska. Um, looks like they were shot. Um, they're still looking to try and find out as really who was the person who actually committed this uh, horrific crime. There isn't uh, enough detail to say much more but I'm just gonna leave it at that and let you guys know that we're praying for you guys. I've talked to uh, Master Chiefs uh, retired from the Coast Guard. I've talked to Chiefs who have been retired. Some enlisted and a few civilians because like they say you know we in the Coast Guard uh, even though I'm a veteran there's only like 30 something thousand of us and it's not that hard to uh, to see the bigger picture and to see all the things that are um, that encompass what what it means to be a Coast Guardsman and and who we are and all that so I just had to stop and give you guys my little my little thoughts about it um, it is very sad that we live in a day and age where these things happen because there's only been like one Coast Guardsman that has actually died since uh, the 9-11 you know events that are going on we did have one man uh, get killed by a uh, suicide um, I'm gonna call boat bomber because it was it was a boat a go fast a small little vehicle craft that crashed into the guy and yeah it was a pretty sad story um, but honestly this is something that really uh, I, you can tell I'm pretty emotional tonight because I know some of the people involved and I know people that are at the at the unit and have been at the unit and whatnot, so it's it's going to be a difficult time for many people. So I just wanted to start with that tonight and to say my prayers are with you guys. Um, on to other business at hand. Uh, the the war on pornography has been something that we've talked about on the program before, and we've tried to cover the many facets of what God prefers versus what the world thinks of. Well, um, recently the administration uh, is being urged to enforce laws against hardcore pornography, but more specifically, it's the obscenity laws, uh, the federal obscenity laws, and honestly there are state uh, obscenity laws, and uh, this can determine what kind of film is actually being produced and sold legally. Um, right now, currently, there are forms of pornography that are being sold that are honestly, according to the current law, not old law, current law standing today, that should be deemed obscene and not allowed to be used. Um, the Morality and Media Advocacy Group on the war of illegal pornography has signed has a signature petition of over 5,000 people and um, they're sending this to the House Judiciary and Energy Commerce Committees and explaining why relevant laws are, are and explaining why relevant laws aren't being uh, taken care of and what's the big issue here with why are we pretty much not even really endorsing our own current rule and regulations. This is something I realize we have to try and get a hold of and grasp and, and change and, and move us to that place where we really need to be. Uh, personally, as we've interviewed ex-porn stars, 
and those that have been molested, sex trafficked and whatnot, uh, you can tell that this is a big issue, uh, not only in America, but the rest of the world. Uh, I was talking to Brandy when she was here, we were talking about Thailand. And uh, for those of you who aren't feel familiar with Thailand, Thailand is one of the biggest hubs for child pornography. And people in the U.S. fly specifically over there to either get a child or to come back here and do whatever it is, you know, what they want to do with their kids. I, I remember in Houston, they shut down a barber shop because all the women that worked at the barber shop were actually slaves of the man that owned the building. And in this barber shop, they after hours they would give massages with happy endings. Um, but they were doing all this stuff against their own will because they were brought here illegally in a big, big tanker uh, container that was brought overseas on a boat and then brought here. It was just a sad, horrific story that these poor women were being forced uh, to do sexual acts on men and women uh, against their will and had to sleep in this building. They didn't really have much of anything. Um, on to some breaking news. People have been asking us, and this is going to require Miranda to probably talk. Uh, everyone's been asking what is our political stance on GOP candidates. Um, GOP candidates. <clears throat> this is a good question. I think Miranda's getting up. You getting up? I'm up. She's up. Oh boy. Um, I actually have my hand her tape from. I was up. I was just, you know, I'm back here. <laughs> yeah, she's behind me, um, monitoring stuff and all that. Um, uh, but Centorum is out. Uh. He, Perry's out. Perry's out. Um, uh, Bachman's out. Bachman's out. Everybody's out, but there's a possibility that some people's names might still be <clears throat> on a ballot. Newt is in um, and Newt, Romney is in. Newt is in. Romney is in. Ron Paul is still theoretically in. Uh, speaking of Ron Paul, one of the most interesting things is, is I've noticed a lot of his events are not being publicized. Plus, they are massive crowds. But when interviewing... The people of the crowds, mm -hmm. they are either driving or flying in from out of city. And a good portion of some of the people, not the majority, but a good 20% or more, are not even registered voters. So the reason why Ron Paul is not even having much of an impact is because the people following him haven't registered to vote. There's a bunch of high school kids, college age kids over the age of 18 to 30 that aren't registered to vote. Now, when you look at places such as Chillicothe, Ohio, uh, the 18 to 30 year old crowd at OUC Chillicothe, Ohio University Chillicothe, they will clearly sit down in your face and as politely as possible, and some of them not as polite, and tell you I don't care about voting and I don't see the point in voting. Um, I've already been uh, asked to do a couple of surveys and, and done a few other things and whatnot about this subject and I realize as a Christian you have to make difficult choices when it comes time to vote. Um, I realize as a ministry our country tells me that if I'm an official ministry according to government laws which I don't fall, fall under that I'm just a person I can't tell you who to vote for. But I'm going to tell you to vote for a conservative candidate. And a lot of times, if our current government establishment, Republican and Democrat, who are majority parties, if both continually go down the path that they're going, they are both completely wrong and leading our country to destruction. Well, yes, I've said that. Our stance is, um, I think, um, well... Our opinion on the candidates that are now here. Um, Romney and what I've seen that he supports, he supports abortion. He supports a lot of things that go against our faith as a Christian, as Christians. And in my opinion, if you vote voting for Romney or supporting Romney is the same as supporting uh, almost the same as supporting Obama. Um, could be wrong, but uh, things that he said and things that he supports. Um, also, his comments on the soldier who killed the numerous uh, Afghan people. His comments were shared on JMC Live. He was interviewed 
and on I think CNN or MSNBC or something like that. And his comment was he was a crazed gunman. He called one of our soldiers who lost part of his foot. Okay, he's a wounded soldier. Okay, and he'd been over there four tours of duty. Called him a crazed gunman. I don't really think a lot of him when he starts calling our soldiers that even though yes it was wrong what this man did but he should not have said that I don't think a lot of Romney after that and some of the other things he has said Newt um, many say if you vote for Newt you're just voting for Bush and you're gonna have the same old same old or they point um, out Newt has had an affair I mean the whole thing with this politics I think what it comes down to is you have you know our stance is none of these politicians are perfect. None of them are going to be completely honest with the American people. To be completely honest, they would have to give up a lot of stuff. And to be honest, they probably wouldn't even get nominated. To be completely honest and do, do, pe and do the things the right way in, yeah. in society today, that just I don't see that happening. Yep, so that's why we have to be careful with what we do. I mean, I'm going to say I mean, that... I think we also need to realize that they, everybody, we're human. We make mistakes. We're not perfect. Um, but in my opinion, if there are a lot of people out there that are supporting Newt Gingrich, um, and that's fine, I... I can't really say anything exactly bad about him. Yes, I don't agree with him having extra marital affairs. Um, I do think he did a lot of good when he was Speaker of the House back in the 90s. He did he did a lot of good. You know, he's not perfect things, but the fact that Romney has been seen saying more bad things and the fact that Newt doesn't support abortion, Romney does. That should really solidify the vote for the Christian, uh, Christian uh, people. So what happens is, is there's also been the argument, is a Republican a Christian and is a Democrat a Christian? And I'd have to do a whole hour show on that alone. Um, many people are still trying to decipher what I believe. But... Most people don't know that when it comes to these decisions, when it comes to making choices on politics, uh, you have to go with the Word of God. You can't go with what I just have to tell you. Although many people want to hear what I'm going to have to say. Um, I'm going to sit here and cross the line. I'm going to say what I think. Well, and, and the fact is, we don't agree. We didn't agree... Um, we, you and I don't see eye to eye with the candidates in, in our own house. Of course, we're not going to vote for Obama, but we don't agree with the different candidates for the GOP. See, at one and point... that's weird, because you would think Jeremy and I would agree, but we don't. And it, here's, here's me being transparent. Miranda's not going to probably say what she did, but I'm going to, because okay. people want to know. Um, I originally had Perry and Gingrich. Gingrich being the vice president. <clears throat> Because in my mind's eye, um, Gingrich has not been in a presidential lineup. And my thinking was, allow him to be the vice president for four-year term. Get to know more of the law of the land at that level. He's already been around because of Bush. And then let him run as president the following year. So I thought Perry possibly is president. I don't know how that was going to work. Because my thinking is... Like, say, for instance, if I wanted to run for president of the United States, the way I would want to do it is I would want to run for a city council position, work my way up to possibly a mayor, work my way up to be a governor, uh, and then after that I would want to do House of Representatives, then I would want to do Senate, then I would want to do Vice President, then I would want to be the president. And in some cases, like, I, I got elected direct, direct into Vice President of Student Senate at OUC for a time being, Sometimes it just happens. You just fall in the line of that set place. But in my brain, I'm thinking you need to go through some steps to get to a certain place. But we, I'm looking at the presidents. I have a poster on my wall, and I'm thinking how some of them 
have been senators, some of them have been governors, some of them don't have any but of that, I think what we need so to look on and so at, forth. But I think the main thing we need to look at, majority of our presidents, yeah. they were veterans. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's I, what I'm I truly it. believe that that's you know, what we need. We need... Like George Washington, how, how many people have seen the picture of George Washington where, where the soldiers are sitting on the side, I don't know, maybe it was just in my textbook, the, the soldiers had busted shoes. This is a story I learned in social studies class where George Washington was leading the men in war and they marched so much that all their shoes were busted and they were wearing hats and other pieces of, of cloth and whatnot. And it's a, it's a defining picture because it was supposed to have been actually hand drawn for a newspaper article displaying the leadership of George Washington that in spite of the adversity of torn tattered shoes and mind you this was during a snowstorm of over a foot of snow he had soldiers who got gangrene and feet were numb and and so on and so forth nasty icky stuff um, then you look at other presidents Jefferson I'm looking at who else on here do you see Miranda that that you stick out in your head um, there's like just so many people on here Ulysses S Grant Andrew Jackson I'm looking at so many people that have had some form of other positions or even veteran status and today's society being a veteran running for a president is almost like a no-no but wouldn't you rather have someone who understands the military better you know it's it's a real tough call well, I'm on, on what they were here. willing to fight for our freedoms they yeah. were willing to fight to uphold our constitution and our beliefs and if we don't have a president who is willing to do that, then we might as well just forfeit our country and just let someone else take over. I know. I mean, that's why I truly believe that a good president must first prove that they are capable and willing to fight to uphold what our founding fathers fought for. Because that was, died for. that was one of the things that George Washington, John Adams, and Jefferson, and Madison, and a few of them were talking about in the beginnings of the founding of our country, that uh, when other candidates were going against them, and so on and so forth, um, how many presidents can you think of, and this is what Washington was talking about, they wanted to have that military. How many of the last ten presidents do you think that at a time of war they would go and put on an army Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard outfit. You know who's the best example right now? Is Mr. M Mr. Mr. Prince right now over in England. Mm -hmm. Harry. Harry. Prince Harry. What's he doing? He's flying freaking helicopters. And what's helicopter. the country doing? They actually respect that. Mm -hmm. Because he's like, well, I understand how the, 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 the military is. I put myself out on the line. You know, I understand we must protect our country. I want to set an example, and that's the thing. I understand about not wanting to have war or, or so on and so forth, whatnot. You know, there's that whole, let's just try and make peace and everything. But as a country, um, it doesn't always work that way. Um, I'm actually going to be sharing a documentary with Miranda later on that um, I've acquired uh, about a Nobel Peace Prize winner uh, or uh, candidate and he he's the guy who helped uh, uh, implement Arab Spring yes I have the movie how to start a revolution I have it and I'm gonna be documenting and educating myself on how all this actually worked and why things have changed from how we've been as the beginning of the country to where we're trying to go now and society as a whole why America is actually split to be honest um, if, if states had the rights to not have to jump through so many loopholes, I think we'd have 152 states at this point because there's so many different paradigm shifts of what people believe and whatnot. Speaking about what people believe, what about Zimmerman being filed second degree murder? I'm not going to talk a lot about this because I'm not going to give it power. I've already given my pinpoint thoughts about this whole thing. I want it to end, I want it to get over with, and, you know, I want this whole racial issue to just be removed. But then again, 
it's not going to be removed. Why? Because we have people like Van Jones who's planning America's Arab Spring Revolt. And I'm not going to show you the graphic image uh, of a woman almost topless to describe this article. But, um, and you're like, how do you transition from Zimmerman to Van Jones? I'm like, well, it's another issue going on with race going on with economy and like right now I have two college books in my possession and I have several friends that are in high schools across America who are not learning what capitalism and what our country is actually founded on so many people are not being taught that America is a republic mm -hmm. we're being taught America is just the majority now where majority rules where I mean it doesn't matter what you believe in do you realize and, and the thing is, a the democracy thing is, here's the crazy part that I that, that I know a democracy is kind of what Rome had. Yeah. Majority right. rules. How do you think they had a Colosseum? Because everybody wanted to watch the guy fight the tiger and get eat by the tiger. It brought well, money. What I think you cool. also need to realize is when the majority rules, truth becomes relevant. Yes. And, and what is truth and what is and what is uh, um, morally right becomes relative. And see, that's the thing. When you take something to become, when you take culture and relevancy and Relatively um, speaking, is that a word? relatively speaking. You said relatively. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. What worries me, and I'm seeing this in churches today, is that we got to reach the culture. We got to reach the culture. And I don't know how many of you realize the Bible I read says Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Mm -hmm. Not. Christ changes as the wind changes, the sun goes up and down. Or as the majority rules. Or majority rules. No, being a Christian, most of the historic time frames of society was not something fun to do. So I'm sitting here looking at this Occupy movement, and they're trying to compare it to Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. And I don't even know how they can say that. How they can compare that to Gandhi. The reason why they're doing this, and here, here's what I'm only defending them. They're using this Nobel Peace Prize winner, and it's saved, Miranda, mm -hmm. on your computer if you want to look at the file. Okay. Um, what well, I'm, Gandhi didn't go in and... No. He, he, he kept telling the people, peace. We well, don't, see, we but see, don't. that's the thing. This, this, this um, Nobel Prize winner who helped create Arab Spring, mm -hmm. what was implemented was supposed to be educating the masses of the people and have them all show up in one location and not leave until their demands are met and not supposed to do anything bad. That's what his template was. However, however, when you bring a mass group of people together... You're just asking for trouble. Uh, and I don't have a... I mean, that's what we've done here even in America. We, we kind of did that in a way... But, you know, Gandhi did succeed. That is the point. He succeeded in many peaceful rallies. However, the British government attacked them and killed many of them, even though they were women and children. They didn't have any weapons. They were just sitting. They weren't doing anything. Um, I don't see that exactly happening with the Occupy people. I do not. I don't see yeah. them when they want the demands met. What are they doing? They're, t they're trashing things. Gandhi, what did he do? He went on, when people were uh, doing violence, what did he do? He said, I will go on a hunger strike until the violence stops. And see, that's where, the thing. Where, 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 are, where are those people standing up? And that's the thing. I'm not seeing nor hearing a majority of people that are for the Occupy. And I have friends on my Facebook and Twitter, and even a majority of people at my college are all for this stuff. They're like, I'm going to go march, blah, 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 blah. Um, but when it comes time to publicly taking a stand and saying you don't want violence, I'm not hearing anyone verbally telling me that. I've asked people to put it in writing. Nobody will deliver me a document outside of the official Occupy websites. Nobody is doing what Gandhi's doing. I'm like, you want to sit here and, well, and Gandhi, you want to sit here and destroy Christianity? You're you're doing a good job at well, it because that's what's going to happen. Too, Gandhi wasn't about. Um, the, Telling the government to take care of us. Gandhi was telling the people to rise up and 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 empower themselves. Don't depend on the government. And see, Don't that's what the, the occup. But see, that's exactly what the occupy was about. It was about empowering the but people. But at the same time, they want the government to take care of them. No, what they're wanting to do, and this is not what's being televised, is the what's happening with the occupy is is about a group of people being 
thought of an idea, no matter how radical and crazy it is, and get everybody all excited and chaotic so then other groups can come in and corral them down, such as the Muslim Brotherhood, such as others, and then you have Shi'ar Allah, which end up bringing a dictator even worse than the one before, because another minority group ends up taking over and coming to more power. There's going to be more. There are more Christians in the Arab Spring countries mm -hmm. since that has started that have been killed before the last ten but years. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about America, since they want to bring Arab Spring to. America. But that's what they're going to do here. Have you not? Have you? Have yeah, America, have you not seen the law? What they are doing right now is not lining up with anything peaceful. Okay, Arab Spring wasn't exactly peaceful. No, I mean it's still it's 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 caused like a whole war in the you know northern Africa and, and towards the Middle East. I mean, and that's the problem. And, and, we are and when, if that comes here, we're going to have another civil war. Yeah, and that's that's the point. Um, it's not going to be peaceful for very long because I'm looking at people like uh, Francis Fox Piven. And Van Jones, and, and the list goes on and on of people I've seen, even professors at my college that have endorsed this. Um, people are specifically talking about, by all means possible, I'm going to sit my butt on this ground and you're not going to make me move no matter what you say. When you have such a defining order and then more people show up, eventually, you know, someone's going to get arrested because. If you bring enough people to one area, you shut it completely down. That's not peaceful. That's discord. And that leads to violence. And, like, what happens if your downtown city is completely shut down? Well, there's no city hall, no city hall, then there's no checks, then there's no this, well, well, you know, well, so on and so look forth. At what, they, they, they compare themselves to Gandhi. Let's, let's, say, let's say what Gandhi did. Gandhi said, okay, to boycott what the British government doing, they're taking our jobs away, okay, they're sending them to Britain, okay, so all the cloth that we wear isn't being made here, so it's taking jobs, so what do we do, we stop buying the cloth, and we start spinning our own, and Gandhi made yep. his own clothes, and that's one of that the things you're not protest. seeing here, that was a peaceful protest, okay, so if we want to, if we want to protest these big companies, what do we do, we stop buying iPads. We stop buying the computers. We stop buying the, the phones. I don't see that happening. But better yet, you don't have to stop buying. Why not do what Gandhi did and start your own small business? That's right. Right here in well, America. And, and, and also, he also did a protest where he walked like what three, two, three hundred miles to the ocean. Yep. And what did he do? It was illegal to make your own salt. Okay, yeah. a person could not legally make their own salt in India back then. The British government controlled everything. Okay, so what did he do? He went and made salt at the sea. That was his protest, and so he got everybody to make their own salt. So what did they do? They didn't buy salt from the British. And you know what? That's an example of that's an example of a capitalist society, that's not right. a communist society, not a socialist society, and not an independent society. Because the true definition, not Jeremy's definition, not Miranda's definition, not Jesus Christ's definition, the actual definition before it's been changed on Wikipedia and before it was changed in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah, all these different books that are now floating online, the definitions of all these words, we're getting so used to things like Wikipedia and so on and so forth, where in the blink of an eye, the definition in the, of a word has changed. Wikipedia is nothing but a bunch of people just randomly putting whatever they think something so, is. So here's, the, the, here's the true definition, definition. Of, of a capitalist society. It's a society where people have the freedom to make their own goods and services and sell them the way they want, to price them the way they want, and to be able to price, you know, so on and so forth. Yes, I understand there are corrupt people in the world who are, are doing certain things. Do you want to know one of the interesting things? Now, why everyone's talking about, well, there's this 1% in America. We need to, and, and, our, and our issue is that, you know, America is the only country left that has 491% increase difference divide between a CEO and the bottom rank of a pay employee. Is because we allow people to get paid more. Yeah. When you are a communist country, a CEO is only allowed to make, and we've already seen this. 
They put here, a cap on it. That here, yeah, they put a cap on it. We've already, you know an example? Right after the stock crashed in 2008 and the government started buying the banks and started buying the car dealerships, did you realize they put a cap on what these employees are allowed to get paid? Mm -hmm. It's $250,000. They can't make a cent more on regular pay. Now, how fair is that? But then on the other side of the spectrum, they're saying, well, the... Um, minimum wage workers and the those that just finished high school to those that have an associate degree, a bachelor degree, a master's degree, you're going to get paid um, $250,000. We're going to divide that into in like five pieces. So the entry and position is going to be like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 versus before it was twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So what happens? It's quite simple. When you are an employee, and I understand the CEOs and higher level executives have been getting raises more often than say their lower ones that's a simple fix you can just change a simple law that doesn't require a whole lot of bigger role or whatever you want to call it mess to say employee if a CEO and executives are allowed to get pay raises then across the board pay raises should be made when deemed necessary and it should be required every X amount of years. There should be contracts and things like that. That can fix that problem. You don't have to do all this Arab Spring. It's a simple ruling that could be done that wouldn't really change too much of an of an, an a company. Because instead of giving all the CEOs some of the money, yeah, you can give it down to some of the others. But that's part of the problem where the socialists and, and communists want to come in. They say... Well, that person can't get any more money, so what I want to do is I want to make every employee make $250,000 and no one can get any more and no one getting less. That's supposed to be their perfect ending plan. Well, if you have 105 employees all making $250,000 and you're selling beef jerky, or I'm going to give an example, this coconut cream egg by uh, Russell Stover, um, how much do you think you would have to charge for one of these? Mm -hmm. If everyone at your job made the same amount of money you would more than likely have to charge five hundred to a thousand dollars per each piece of candy that's the problem with socialism the employees end up getting a lot of money i'm going to give you that you get a lot of money but it, you can only get so much you're not allowed to get any more then on the other side all of your goods that you're trying to sell you end up jacking the prices up so high guess what ends up happening in the end for all these people who say socialism and communism is the best thing to do and it's a Christian trait you end up killing people how do you kill people well you make the prices of goods and services so high that minimum wage right now is what 740 or 55 here in Ohio oh, the Occupy wants to make that 17 to 25 dollars an hour so what happens prices of goods go up and then those people that are already poor who are making minimum wage, if that at all, what happens if you aren't if you don't have a full time job and you're disabled, these are the people I'm talking about. Because you're not gonna hear them say that. Yeah, if you have a minimum wage job, you go from seven dollars to fourteen or twenty five dollars an hour, you're gonna be kinda A OK until the inflation hits and the price of weenies goes up. I'll give you a good example that shows you how people don't pay attention. Twelve years ago, I bought a package of ballpark franks, beef franks, 10 ounce, no, it was 12 ounces. 12 ounces, there were 10 weenies, frankfurters, franks, beef, whatever you want to call it. It was 49 cents on sale, originally 55 cents. 12 years ago, today, 2012, ballpark beef franks at a store that I will not disclose are $4.99. Now, from 1985, the first time I bought a weenie, because weenies were my wonderful thing, and I told my mom to buy me one, all the way until 2000, the prices of weenies were 30 to 49 cents. Now, how can we go 20 years with 49 cent package of weenies that were 12 ounces to now, and not even five years later, they're four dollars and ninety-nine cents. They're not twelve ounces. They're anywhere between six ounces and twelve ounces, depending on what kind you get. Have you looked at your cereal boxes? They're two to six ounces less now. All of our foods are being the same price, but we're getting less food, and they're changing it by the second or the point digit difference. And you people just don't read that stuff.
That's how they're getting away with it. And we're buying it for a higher price. It's less food for a higher price. So, so like people in the chat are talking about, well, what happens? Those that are disabled, mentally ill, sick, poor, whatever the word you want to call it. If because they're you're, not contributing to society. If you're not contributing to society, you're not going to be able to catch up. Because guess what's supposed to happen with this whole socialistic, communistic thing? There's not supposed to be any more money for 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 disability and any more money for health care. Yes, if Obama, uh, this Obama administration health care thing passes, everyone's going to be required to get something and then people will be taxed. But it's still going to be the same as like Medicare or Medicaid. There's still going to be these rules and regulations where this medication's covered and this one's not. And you're only going to get a small amount of money. For those that are on disability or whatever, it's like $700, $800, maybe $1,000 a month. If we continually going down the path that we are, that's not going to be enough. I mean, I read a statistic the other day that said the current price of minimum wage, you'd have to work 90 hours a week for four weeks to afford a minimum one bedroom efficiency. So how do you think, now honestly, those that are on disability, it's only a half to 75% of that 90 weeks is what you even get paid. So guess what happens? All the sick old people, disabled people, die. You don't believe me? Go look overseas. Look for history. those of you, go look at history. For those of you who are not familiar with the it's international, called, and it is called population control. Yeah. And for those of you that have not really paid much attention to international society, when you go to a bigger city, and you and you work at a job with international people, I worked at Quest up in Dublin, Ohio. The floor I was on had Asians, Hispanics. South Americans, Central Americans, Canadians, Africans, Europeans, Chinese, Australians, Indians, and then Middle Eastern people. Why? Because they got paid less because they were being paid what they were getting paid in their country. Five to six people were living in one apartment together and they told me that they came here because they could get paid more. If we are such a bad country, why is everybody trying to get here? And if we end up wanting to be like everyone else, you know what happens then? If we continually go down this cashless society, we continually go down this international monetary society. When one falls, we all fall. There won't be anyone to bail anyone else out. Right now, the United States is bailing out countries and supporting the International Monetary Fund and so on and so forth. But at the same time, at the same time China put it, is bailing us out. And then China's bailing us out and they have the best GDP. This is the argument. They're like, well, China's got the best GDP. And I'm like, they're now going through their in industry res revolution period. They're getting all these jobs and they're trying to move up in society. But I, yet, what? even though all these people got jobs over there, People are so poor, even though they have jobs, they are literally working 50 to 60 hours, between yeah. 50 and 60 hours a week, seven days a week, yep. and they're begging for overtime because they still can't make enough 40 hours a week to feed their families. And People, then they're living yeah. in these small little box crate-like places. Yeah, they're, they're a, uh, CNN showed this. CNN showed that in China... A, a, a reporter went over there and was walked through these uh, should be condemned apartment buildings. Um, people were paying two hundred dollars. Chinese people with jobs paying two hundred dollars a month to live in a cage the size a little bit bigger than a, a great big dog kennel. Yeah, they're living in cages, and this is what we want to be. This is what the Occupy says we need to be. I say the Occupy, you go live in the cages and you work for the $2 an hour and you work seven days a week, 50 to 60 hours a week. And Here it is, guys. Me. Look at it. You see this? That, yes, that's a woman's panties. She's in a, literally a cage. It almost looks like chicken wire. That's that what that's what she's sleeping in. I'm not making. And she it. pays for this. And she now pays remember, for this. this is what they want us to go to. They want us to pay two hundred dollars a month to live in a cage and just think. And these cages are stacked on top of each other, sometimes three to four high, and people are living above and below each other in one room. There, there are sometimes I think ten people living in this one in one room in all these little cages. And here's the interesting part. For those of you who are going to argue that this is just a uh, goofy thing, look where I'm getting this from. This is from the Mail Online. Dailymail.co.uk. I'm not making this stuff up. K 
Caged dogs of Hong Kong, the tragedy of tens of thousands living in a six foot by two foot rabbit hutches in a city with more Louis Vuitton shops than Paris. Now here's the most interesting thing. I want you to stop listening to this program right now. I want you to go pick up your phone. I want you to go take your tag off your shirt. And I want you to tell me how many of you guys have things in your house that are made in China. It's scary. Our vacuum cleaner. Our vacuum cleaner is made in China. Do you realize the price of that vacuum cleaner is less than what they get paid in a whole week? Less than what they get paid in a whole week. And this old lady, or man, I can't tell what that is. There are paintings right here. It looks like a woman. um, There's more pictures. Look at this. Here's some more. Now, given, yeah, 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 she's mentally ill and lives in this cage. That's what's going to happen. Some of these people live in these cages. They work. They have jobs. Yeah. But that's really great. We need to do that. Now on to another subject. Ex-gay bus ads banned by London transport officials. So a Christian group was trying to minister to homosexuals that you're not born this way. And the ad said, not gay, post-gay, ex-gay, and proud. Get over it. Some yeah, people are gay. Were, there are people that used to be gay that became Christians that are supporting this because they it, they wanted people to know that you can find a different way to live. This isn't. Yep. And and I honestly have and I'm working. I'm working on getting some interviews set up on this because I have some friends that used to be gay, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual. Um, I know some people that used to that got a sex change from a man to a woman and and became a Christian and decided to actually repair the damage to their physical body and turn themselves back into their rightful gender and honestly got married and moved on with their lives. Um, I don't understand why in the world we have to teach that if you're gay or you're bi or whatever, that's just the way you are. There's no other route. And you should embrace who you are. You know, I'm, I'm currently writing a paper, and... Um, it's it's really one-sided when you think that only a person that used to be straight... Well, well let me gay, finish. I'm in the middle of my... Not, I'm in the middle of my... Okay, sorry, I'm, sorry. Um, I'm currently writing a paper, and within it, I'm talking about the different things that have happened to me personally, and I haven't got to this point yet. But I was accused as a child of being one of these categoristic homosexuals because of my feminine looks or my voice or whatever their excuse was and it just made me angry and now I go to school and people that are homosexual people that are straight they're, 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 this word gay is now being used as a curse word and being gay because I was raised by my grandmother it used to mean you were happy not a sexual um, activity once again Another word whose meaning has changed throughout history. Because the majority wanted. Because it. the majority wanted it to change. Being gay is supposed to mean you're happy. There's a Christmas song that has the word gay in it. And the word queer used to mean just strange, strange. not gay. So why are we changing the definitions of words to define things? And why are we sitting there saying, well, if you're homosexual or you're bisexual, whatever you are, and I've been accused of this stuff today that I'm I'm gay or bi or whatever. I'm not. Sorry to burst some people's bubbles, but um, oh, and 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 then another word that's used, it's more, it's more like well, putting that. Um, a cigarette back in the old days was called a fag. Yeah. And there are old movies that say, you know, I want to drag on my fag, and I think even British people, that was a British term a lot, but now fag means some kind of a derogatory term for a homosexual person. Where why have we done this? And it is quite simple what's happening with why we keep changing all these different things. Is that people don't like other opinions. You know, when I'm going to sit here and tell you that, you, you know, you're not a Christian or you are a Christian or, or you're not. I don't understand why we can't disagree on things anymore. To be a Christian and live in this world, we have to live with homosexuals. We have to live with murderers and rapists and pedophiles and uh, 
blasphemies and, and so on and so forth because we have to live in this world. You can't get away from the world. God did not tell us to go live in a box and cut ourselves off from the world. I'm at a public college that's liberal, that's completely against Jesus Christ and pro-communist, pro all you name it, they're all for it. Um, the Bible I read says that we need to be able to effectively spread the gospel and stories like this just urges me on although a lot of people would give up I love the fact that these uh, officials are trying to ban a London transport well guess what's happened it's on the Christian Post right now you know this article written by Jeff for a Christian Post so while these people keep sitting here wanting to try to shut us up God finds another way to get the message out but what I don't, it's never can, can it, I share something? what um, the thing that I, I think is so one-sided is um, people think society, majority, is saying, well, only a straight person can be uh, come gay, or somebody that was possibly straight can become gay. Not a homosexual can become straight. It, they, they make it where it doesn't work. They're, they're promoting that it just doesn't work both ways, when actually it does. And they're saying that once you become gay, you're always going to have that. And that's not true because, well, what if you were once straight? I mean, so everybody that is straight can one day become gay, but nobody that was always gay can't become straight. I mean, it just, that just, it's so one-sided. It's so prejudiced because there are people out there who are straight who used to be gay. And what is so wrong with promoting that? It works both ways. That people have choices. Yeah, what's happening is it's taking away your free will and mind. This is me talking to you as a human being. If you're going to tell me that you're going to take away my freedom to decide if I'm straight or whatever, then what kind of freedom of will choice is that? There isn't one. In the Bible I read says that every day that we live our lives, we have to make choices and we're not robots. We have a choice to follow the Word of God or not, and it is our fleshly desire to want to become more like the world, whereas our spirit man is warring with our flesh and wants to become more Christ-like. We can even go as far to make it more childlike, okay? As a child, normally children don't like a lot of vegetables, certain vegetables. Yep. I know when I was young, um, I hated certain vegetables. I love majority of my vegetables, and I would eat whatever was laid before me, whether or not I liked it or not. Uh, I, I hate meatloaf, okay? Um, never have liked meatloaf. However, I will make let, her eat let, it one day, and she'll like it. Let's say, I'm not against eating meatloaf, but let's say, okay, as a child, when you, when you may not like a certain type of food, but when you get older, you're... You change, and your idea, your thought change, your thought process change, and your taste buds change. And you one day wake up and you eat this vegetable you hated years ago, and now you like it. It's the same thing with. It's it's a choice. It is the same thing as a homosexual be waking up one day and saying, "Well, I think I want to be straight," and as the same as a straight person saying, "Well, I want to be a homosexual man." It is both ways. Mm -hmm. It is. And now on to North Korea. Uh, oh, 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 boy, they made all I'm going to say is, is the rocket didn't work, which is sad. And it's good news for us and bad news for them. Uh, there's rumor that it was a, and I'm sorry if I'm crossing the line mentioning this, but I can't be the only person thinking this. Some people think it was bot botched deliberately by a said outside entity source, such as a military action. Well, or it's just that they haven't figured out how to do it yet. So this is pretty. This is something that my grandmother was worried about mm -hmm. when 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 this kid's father was still in power and well, and, and the guy before that that was in power. North Korea has always been a country that America has been worried about and. If we're busy bickering about Occupy and who's going to vote and run for president here in the fall, we are totally, completely missing out. Yes, sirree. We are missing out on what is coming next because I'm telling you. It isn't just North Korea. It's Iran. And Miranda, well. you can make another post that we're on, on air. we got five viewers right now. Um, 
because we're going to keep going. I got a lot of content to cover tonight. Um, I'm not going to stop. And the reason why I'm talking about North Korea right now is you, you, you need to wake up to the point in realization um, that being a Christian and living in society, there's going to be evil in this world. We have Iran, we have North Korea, we have other countries in Africa, um, even China. For those of you who aren't aware, China just recently created this big super mega aircraft carrier. Um, there's rumors and talk about Iran, China, and even North Korea's capabilities. And one of the stories I can't tell you yet, submarines with stealth technology. And on the other side of the spectrum, we are selling technologies to other countries who are then turning around, or we're doing it directly, selling technologies to increase the power of the world. Now, you're going to tell me, the interesting thing about North Korea, this is a communist country who believes that they are the number one superpower of the whole wide world, <laughs> that everyone else bows down to North Korea. Hey, they are so delusional. Did you just make a post, Miranda? I need you to make a post right now. Um, North Korea is a country that if you are a Christian, you will be arrested and killed and maybe never seen again. If you have family there, I need you to make that post immediately. Um, if, um, if you are a Christian in North Korea right now and your family is there, they will ransack your whole house, possibly set it on fire, beat, cut, rape and stone your husband, your wife, your children, and possibly your animals. Why are you saying right they now? can get that angry. And the same thing in Iran. I watched, uh, a, well, I watched a documentary about North Korea and about people who escaped from North Korea. And the majority of the time what they do is um, if you are found breaking the law, I mean simple as somebody could accuse you of not, not bowing or not paying respect to Kim Jong-il or Kim Jong-sung image. Um, simple as that. They will put you in a labor camp. Put your entire family in a la forced labor camp. Now, that's what communism is. It is forced labor. Majority of the time, you work for the government and that's it. You don't get any extra stuff. They put, if you are found breaking, if they, and you don't, they don't have to, you know, send you in front of a judge or jury. They can just do whatever they want with you. They put these people in labor camps for the rest of their lives and work them to death. That is a lot of times what they do. And you're never heard of again, and you live and you die in this labor camp. For the oh, government. yeah. But people want to continually look towards this kind of activity. Um, people are trying to say that, that, you know, this is great, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like sitting there thinking, no, no, it's not great. It, it, it's creeping me out. What is even creepier is now that uh, North Korea just came out. North Korea wants, um, is, is going to start letting tourism come to their country. Um, however, <laughs> to, tourism in North Korea is a whole lot different than tourism, say, in Europe. Because when you go to North Korea for tourism, I saw a documentary. I, saw, oh, yeah. I, I watch a lot of documentaries. What these, what these men encountered when they were um, being... On a, you know, uh, visiting North Korea, they at all times had an armed guard with them. Oh yeah, watching over them, making sure they did not disrespect any image, anything of um, their leader, which is their god. Because communism, you worship whoever rules the country. There is no other. There is no other deity higher than that. And if and that's why they hate religion, because you are to worship communism as your god. So. Um, these men, they hid their cameras. They were doing a hidden documentary about North Korea, basically, illegal. And um, at all times, they were, they, sometimes they were filming um, with permission, and they were being told, oh, you cannot film them. Um, the, the, the things that they um, encountered, it was so bizarre. Um, they would um, drive down the road, and there was not one car on the highway. That these beautiful freeways, but not one vehicle was on the freeway. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, creepy. Like right now, there's there's cities in North Korea and and in China where 
nothing's going on anymore. There's no social, economic anything. Well, they, they, the people can't afford cars, and they don't, and, and only certain government officials are allowed to have vehicles. Everybody else has to ride bicycles or you know whatever, and they they literally don't have anything unless the government gives it to them. Oh yeah, and and that's what we have to worry about. That's the thing that uh, continually seems to push the bar as who are we what are we about what are we going to do and you know how can we how can we move forward all i can say um, is if you want to if you want to see if you want to go visit a communist country you go right ahead you you can have all the fun you want go to north korea and have an armed guard escorting you everywhere making sure that you don't do anything wrong because and to be, and what is scary is if you do do something wrong over there they can imprison you they can do whatever they want with you mm -hmm. and they, nobody may ever find out what happened to you. I mean, it is scary. It is scary. I mean, I don't yeah, know. That, 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 that's the thing that I run into so many problems in our society as why in the world do we keep doing this to ourselves? You know, there was a time where America did not understand the rest of the world. We were in our own little bubble, and a lot of people want to go back to the little bubble. I realize almost at this point, trying to get back to that little bubble is almost impossible at this point. But that doesn't mean that we can't be an independent country again, self-sustaining. Um, too many times, and I realize as a Christian we want to save people all across the globe. I understand that. But how do you, if you can't, I was taught by my grandmother something a long time ago, and it was quite simply put, if you can't take care of your own family or your own friends, I mean, this is a big southern trait that I don't see in most of the northern states that I've been through. And I've been all the way from California all the way up through the northern states all the way across to Indiana. I haven't been up in, I've been to New York once, but I haven't been through, and I've been to Pennsylvania and New Jersey I haven't been to Maine, but I've been to about 15 or so oh, whatever states. And what I've noticed is we're not working towards protecting our country anymore. We, we are focused on these entities like homosexuality, homosexual marriage, uh, uh, um, pay. But when it comes to a country as a whole anymore... And making certain that we're still here five years from now, 25 years from now, 100 years from now. There are no long-term plans anymore. It's it's all these crazy things that, depending on whoever the culture is, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you were focused on this culture, and you're focused on the fad. That was the word I was told it was in the 80s and 90s. It's a fad. It's a, it's a cliche. It's a click, so on and so forth. Um, when you're focused on that, it's not going to really, you know, go anywhere. It's not going to do anything. Um, then again, uh, another big story that uh, is causing a store uh, is what if you had a statue, you know, in Arizona of a large woman who is naked across the street from a church and a preschool. Your wife is against it. But you as the husband, you think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Because you say it's art. See, this is the new culture issue. And I, and I get this at the college all the time. They had Women's History Month. So what did they have? They had pictures of vaginas. Fictitiously and realistic looking vaginas. Yeah. Naked breasts and, and nipples and so on and so forth. Talking about that's what a woman's about. I'm like, are you really serious? Going to tell me as a man, a woman is limited to her genitalia. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of true, but it's kind of false at the same time. What about uh, all these things that women have been wanting to fight about? You know, you know, being able to vote and being able to prove that you can you know, work a job. Or like when I was at boot camp, guess who was in charge of me? It was a woman. Not she a man. was scary, man. And she was scary. <laughs> she could bench press 350 pounds and she wasn't fat and she did not have muscular. Her arm looked like mine. That, nope. woman, that woman would have been a fearsome thing to behold, I'll tell you that. If I she, got that. All the, she got all the awards for women for women stuff. And I'm sitting there looking at this, at this statue and these things here and it's creeping me out 
that we in society want to limit ourselves to these sexuality and want to call it art. Um, I thought sexuality was supposed to be something private and precious and important to that special person you want to give. Unless you want to sit here and, and you know do what you're doing with this socialism and communism, let's do that with our sexuality. That's what's happening. It's not just the political thing. It's a lifestyle. Or as the current world says, it's a culture relevancy, relative thing. Art. What is art? There's arguments right now in our first story we talked about and I, I mentioned it. Pornography. There's people arguing about bestiality, child pornography, um, having this naked fat woman a, a, a statue uh, and it's quite graphic. You, you can see everything. At least she's sitting down. Um, it makes you wonder and that's okay to put. That's next okay to, to put next to school. next to a church in a school, which you're supposed to teach in school. You're not supposed to touch other people's private parts. Yeah, I can go outside and look at private parts all you want. What are you? What kind of message are you trying to teach your kids? Because when you're a kid, you're gonna say, "What's that lady over there? Why is she so big? What are those things on her chest, mommy? Why? Why can I see her butt, mommy?" Yeah, and you know other. what, mommy, you're gonna have to answer why. Well, and here's the other contradiction too. We we bring, we show children all these movies with all this swearing and bad language, but yet when they start using that language, we discipline them. See, that was one. Of, that, that, that's, that's one so of the things. Stupid. That's one of the things. When I was a kid, when I rebelled against God, I used that against my own mother. So why? My mother let me watch adult content films, R-rated films, non-rated films. She even helped me get pornography. Yet she told me at the ripe age of 12, 13, and 14 that I'm not supposed to use these four letter words and I'm not supposed to do this. But all day, up and down, every day, it was smoke a cigarette, the F word, GD, so on and so forth. And what kind of message does that display to somebody? Do you realize a kid is only going to cuss and is only going to go extremely insane with sexuality is if they've been exposed to it? It's already been proven. These feral children that have been locked up in captivity, and I'm not telling you you need to lock up your kids in captivity, but get where I'm trying to take this subject. These kids don't know a hill of beans about what sex is, much less what their own genitalia is for. Why? Because they haven't been exposed to anything. And I realize that is, that is torture to keep a kid at home and not be able to watch TV and not have a cell phone and a Twitter account or a Facebook account and you can't go hang out with the guy no, and you can't do that. Wait a minute. We didn't have none of that stuff all our life, Jared. And that's the thing. <laughs> but that's the point, you know. This is the argument my grandmother said. She said, well, I didn't have Star Trek and Star Wars when I was a kid. I had a ping pong ball. Yeah. And you know how I played? I went outside at 5 o'clock in the morning. My grandmother wrote a story about this and she thumped the watermelons. Make sure they were oh, that's a good one. She picked it up, slammed it on the floor, and she ate it. I realize today in this world, you, we're not that simple to entertain anymore. So what do you do? You have to get an alternative. You have to bring them Jesus Christ and its core truth and its hard core existence in a current day society. This is where culture is relevant. But the problem is with this conversation is it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. We have youth groups and we have churches and ministries and people running around changing the rules every single day. It's hypocritical. And then we have kids and teenagers and, and college students and I've been surveying college students every day I've been in my college for the past two years on various subjects and every one of them cannot answer over 80% of my questions. Why? Because we keep changing what's happening. We we end up wanting to put too much we put too much of focus on entertainment. So we end up losing people. This is what needs to stop. You know, if we're gonna teach that's one of the issues. I think we have we have gone from a Middle Eastern society when Jesus Christ was alive. Where in the age of 12, 13, and 14, a woman was considered an adult, a boy was considered an adult, compared to our standards today, good grief, my, my, my college professor, uh, one of them, told me that their 16-year-old um, 
son doesn't know anything and can't fix anything, but her 14-year-old daughter could. But then again, when it came to the things that she held responsible and was required to do as a child, neither one of them are having to do today whatsoever at all. Chores. What happened to telling your kids to do chores? Putting them in a timeout in the corner. Spanking. You can't spank no one anymore. We got to tell them not to do that. Well, who's telling them not to do it anymore? I mean, really. I'm seeing so many kids just not being disciplined on anything. We're not learning rules and regulations. It's either they're not, there is no discipline, or it's to the extreme where they're being. Abused. Yeah, yeah. It's either you got There's too no much. Yeah, right now. That's why. That's why. That's why corporate pu corporal punishment, as it's called in the South, where you know you take a paddle. You know, your parents have to sign a piece of paper for. Hey, that uh, went on when we were in school. When I was a kid. I remember that. When I was a kid, I remember the first year it happened. It didn't happen to me until the eighth grade. You got you got paddled. I got paddled all the way through the eighth grade. Hey, I was better than you. Yeah. I never got paddled. I got paddled once in the eighth grade. Wow. I didn't bring the I gym shorts. I never got paddled, but when I was in um, when I was in first grade, I remember seeing this little boy. <laughs> Being dragged down the hallway by, and he was fighting and screaming the principal. And he was, we knew what he was going to get. He was going to get, he was in trouble. And he was going to get a paddling, and he didn't want to get that paddle. And he was fighting the principal, and he was kicking and he was screaming. But that was in the, I was like eighty nine, ninety. Mm -hmm. And so see, that's the problem. There's a big, you know, there, 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 we've gotten to this point where you know, and schools are are guilty just as much as parents. Where they focus too much on paddling, and I and I had a school, a private school, that in one week I got like thirty paddlings, and Every, it was insane. There has to um, be a balance. That's and, and the problem. We're not teaching about balance anymore. It's either one extreme or the other. There's no in between. There's not and nothing in moderation in any anymore. It's everything in excess. And um, mm -hmm. I don't always agree with paddling because, it, like you said, it can be abused, but. There has to be, we have got to gain control. Yep. So there, speaking there of control, I want to end the show on a good note. But it's also a serious note. Because the baby's but, still in critical condition. Well, nobody knows what we're talking about yet. As you see this couple, this is the baby's couple of parents. Um, the Miracle Morgue Baby, which this shows, I believe, the power of Jesus Christ bringing someone back from the dead, although people are going to argue with me and say, that's not plausible. What if I told you that for 12 hours in a coffin, in a morgue, after hospital workers gave up on testing her, she had flat mind, apparently, in Argentina, an infant with common issues, born three months immature, premature. Immature? Well, immature. Is that not was right a good word. one. Premature. Um... What happens? She ends up being born again, as I call it. She ends up being brought back to life. Some people want to argue with me that, well, no, it, it, that's not the way it is. But really, it truly, it is what, I, what, what I'm saying it is. That's just not logically possible. I'm telling you this story tonight because I think America is dead. I think the United States is dead. All of America is dead. I think the whole country, the whole world is dead to, is dead to Christ right now. Because majority of what we hear and the stories that come through day in and day out are about how Satan is trying to take over this world. And I believe Satan is starting to win right now. And people don't like it when I sit here and mention Satan. Well, I'm saying it again, Satan. I don't know, it scares people. I can say Jesus Christ and you think it's a cuss word. I say the word Satan, it freaks people out. I'll say it again, Satan is trying to kill off the Holy Ghost power of Christianity. And I wholeheartedly believe, and there will be a medical proof to show that, well, the baby wasn't really dead in the first place, whatever. I honestly believe this is a good story of God being able to take a bad situation and do something good out of it. All we can do is pray the baby lives because it's still in 
and the baby is still yep. in critical condition, but you know, the Lord brought this baby this far. I mean, I believe the baby, you know, you can see this baby. Yep. All the way through. So if if this can happen like this with a story of a hope and a plan in the future for this kid, and hopefully this kid lives, maybe gets saved, what could God do in your life? Maybe right now you're dead, like this miracle morgue baby. Maybe you are in the morgue. Maybe some of these stories stirred something up inside of you and made you realize that something needs to change. That we need to wake up and stop being the way that we are. Well, until that happens, until that day of change, you got to allow something to happen. you got to allow the Holy Spirit to come inside you and change your life. Well, this has been Eternal Flame News tonight. I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It's been an amazing week. We're going to get this posted tonight. I'm going to go get some water. Miranda's going to get some water, turn the fan on. And we will see you tomorrow at 9 p.m. We will be on air for JMC Live. I just wanted to make this quick little snippet video for tonight for Eternal Flame News. And we'll see you tomorrow. Like I said, we got a couple of interviews being posted this weekend. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.